I'm still recording on my end. I'm so, glad you are. I'm glad everything's working for you. That's wonderful. We just got a, a stream termination from Justin again. Like, yeah. This is this is so rough. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. That's that's no good. I'll, no, I'll keep an eye no. on the action. All right, minigun. He is up to the northwest. I'm not even gonna bother with intros at this point because Lord knows what'll break next, right? Anyway, yeah, like yeah. one of the players is gonna disconnect and it's just gonna tie it all up nicely with a big bow. Yeah. Anyway, I d I didn't get a chance to do my bets. So you bet two zero in favor of minigun, right? Yes. Okay. I say. 2-1 in favor of Puck. All right. 50 bucks on the line for that. All right. Now, that means we're, like, actually sworn enemies. Because not only yeah. did you not go for my player, but you also even went for the different score. So, yeah. all right. I, I don't I think I've ever actually bet that much money. I'm not much of a betting man. I, I'm not quite sure what to think about this. Well, we'll find out sure sooner rather than later. I'm going to say every time I go to Vegas, I lose money. So it's probably better that Jen does these bets rather than me. <laughs> I'm pretty bad at betting, it would seem. So Yeah, she like, she like sweeps, uh, every sweeps time. Vegas there. Every time. She, every time she wins. It's actually ridiculous. Oh, man. Anyway, so we have Puck down to the bottom here playing a super defensive build. Gateway right to the back there. Identical builds otherwise, it's just in terms of the arrangement that's different. So yeah. this gateway, this is actually... Ah, there we go. So we've got that second gateway coming down from both of these. So we're going to be seeing the two Stalker play, most likely, from both Puck and Minigun. We're getting a Stargate coming out right here from Minigun. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting matchup, PvP, these days. Um, ooh, double uh, our Stargate apiece here, excuse me. All right. So... This is gonna get this is gonna get ridiculous. It's gonna kind of remind me of ZBZ, how it's like a lot of fast units moving back and forth nonstop. Uh, because if you think about it, Phoenix and Oracles are both extremely fast units. I think uh, wasn't Blizzard thinking of making Oracles even faster? They're doing something. They're they're, yeah. they're contemplating doing yeah. that. But it's already a very fast unit, so it's definitely something you have to watch out for. And but as you mentioned, other than that, identical builds, the timings are slightly different, but the ideas are the same. The, uh, the amount of gateways right now is about the same. We do have a third gateway for Puck here. Now, what I wanted to say is normally you're going to be seeing an Oracle from one player and DTs from the other player. I'm not quite sure how this shapes up. This is about to get really Oracle. weird, man. It's, it's um, Oracle from say, both sides. Yeah, I do want to say that uh, Minigun does have three probes who are actually auto-following uh, one of the other probes, if you see it there. Oh, really? And not actually mining and that oh, that's sucks in pvp yeah it really really does here comes the engagement though oh miniguns oh he just lost his pile on there he's gonna take oh. a stalker for it though and right now minigun does have a significant stalker lead but of course there's no blink so as long as the force field goes down then he should be fine at least for a while so he'll be able to get another warp in there's actually no way for minigun to warp in now the the he proxy pile out spots of position. high ground with the mothership core, and yes, that's going to scare that sentry away. Can't really warp in another one. He's going to go for it. Did he ever fix those probes? No, he didn't. So he's got to be wondering, where the hell is all my money? Yep. But if he does damage here, it could not matter. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if he can control it. He decides to go time warp. Oh, mothership core is down. That's, that's a big deal. That's no recall available here. Probes now being pu pulled off the line, and the oracle backstab's coming in. Minigun comes in with his own oracle, which means that's going to be a lot of dead stuff everywhere. Then Puck's oracle is going to make its way in there. There's nothing oh, to defend this at all. Puck is going to absolutely destroy this mineral line, but the probes are also going to get killed here. Can Puck actually hold on here? I think Puck's actually in a great spot. He's managed to push this back, and now, since there was no defense to this oracle backstab, he lost, what, uh, 10 probes? 11 probes. Wow. 15 to right, 26. TV, well, well, chances of me winning $50 a day are looking quite bad, as nope. that was a huge amount of damage for an Oracle. The fact that he was delaying his own mining there for so long, his pylon got taken out. I mean, Minigun was in control of the last game, but or the last series even, but he it, it's not working out for him in any way after that uh, initial engagement. Yeah, I, I think that I might be right here. I've got to say. Puck's getting the Twilight Council right now. If he gets blinked before that, we're going to see a transition into Sentry here for Minigun. And I don't think he's got what he needs to make that work. Like, can he expand? Did I say Sentry? Because I meant Phoenix. Did I say Sentry, Mike? I, I don't know. I mean, really, they're basically the same yeah, unit. I exactly. Mean, they they, yeah, they fill the exact same role. Absolutely. So. It's a really there's, easy uh, mistake the to make. There's the Phoenix there. And, uh, I mean, the Phoenix... 
is a it's an interesting unit right now because it can kill off the are there still oracles on the map yeah there's one oracle that that phoenix can kill for free uh which may allow him to do more harassment which you can see he's trying to do but it got locked down the bottom right side um but the phoenix it doesn't add to his army right now and he is behind in supply no surprise there does take out a zealot but uh i don't really know if if uh minigun can expand right now because Puck has had those three gateways. He now has the Twilight Council and the Dark DTs. Shrine on the way. Yeah. Um, an interesting choice, though, I will say, because there, I believe there's two Oracles on the map, which makes scouting out those DTs much easier as they do count as a detector, but you have to use that ability. So either way, as I was mentioning before, I guess everything kind of comes back around to DTs in this matchup. Um, DTs are a great choice. The Dark Shrine costs less. You send in one, you try and do damage. If not, well, you have now Archon Tech, which is a great tech to have in this matchup. So uh, I would say a great choice here from Puck. Yeah, I, I'm interested to see where this goes. The the thing about these... Oh, this Phoenix. If this Phoenix spots his Oracles, that'll be... It's going to see it. Puck's going to spot both the Oracles. That was the ace in the hole there for Minigun. He needed oh, these Oracles, God. and he's going to lose them. He's going to lose both. I think he might lose oh, one. Oh, he might Phoenix save this. Just intercept. Oh! <sighs> Does Minigun kill it takes there. it out. And remember, he needs that Oracle. Oh, he needs to scout the DTs as well, though. He's got uh, no has information. Hasn't spot the Twilight Council or the DT tech, and this is not looking good for Minigun because he lost one Oracle. The other Oracle's way out of position. He has no Robo, and he hasn't been able to harass with these Phoenix. So, again, just not a whole lot going into his favor right now. He kind of needs a miracle or a great decision-making uh, moving forward here. And does he spot the DTs? Oh, he still has not seen them. Yep, no God, visibility. He's, he's about to see them right now, though, as uh, they're attacking his maybe. No, the Stalkers are not in hold position. That DT is loose in the main. There's one at the expansion as well. And this is where crisis management really has to start taking place. But the Oracle's so far out of position. Yeah, he's bringing another Oracle in to deal with this. But this is really, really bad. Oh, this is not going to get out. He's going to be able to shut this down with the Dark Templar. The Oracle will come back eventually. And now we've got this another DT just poking away here, trying to do as much damage as it can. The Stargate has been shut down. The second pylon probably isn't going to finish either. And more to the point, does the Oracle even have the energy it needs? You see, Minigun is actually using the detector ability on it right now, but he's going to head back to the base because this, this second Oracle is not coming out here. Uh, this is great for Puck right now. The, uh, the... It really, the DT, he's done his job already killing workers and delaying the Oracle, but now he's just killing pylons. And uh, what you need to do is really pick it up. There you go. So it there doesn't it do any more damage to nice. you. Does settle down right now, but are things settled? No, they are not. 25 probes to 40 probes right here for Puck. 40 probes. That is a ridiculous advantage in this mirror matchup and uh, almost unrecoverable here. Unless he can really utilize these five Phoenix in an, in an outstanding way. I, I just don't know how he can, though, because he, he has to rely on oracles for detection, so the threat of DTs is always looming. Yeah, it's like, do you backstab with the Phoenix? You can't, because your opponent's got a larger army. You have to rely on that lift, and you also have to be very careful not to take too much damage in the process. Puck's going up the ramp right now, and he has a superior army. Half the Stalkers are airborne right now, though. If he can keep that up, then maybe, just maybe, he may be able to hold it, but no. He says no, and minigun GG's. Puck takes the first game in this best of three series. Yeah, I got to say, I mean, in all honesty, Minigun just just kind of blew that with the uh with, with the with the probes not even mining. That was three probes not that mining. Didn't help. I mean, no. that alone is enough to lose a game, especially when these two players have played against each other so often. Um and he was saying that, you know, they they have big swings where, you know, he plays uh, and one player wins always, then it swings back and the other player wins always. So they know how to beat each other and having a major percentage of your economy not even working, that is enough to kind of ruin a game for anybody. Yeah, it really is. That was, I mean, it was a really well played piece of uh, PvP by Puck, in my opinion. He made very few mistakes. He did the right thing. Catching those oracles out was actually huge. I can't express how big a deal that was. If they were available for a backstab when that army rolled out, that would have been a really ugly position. Puck would have probably lost his entire probe count there, but he didn't, and he did the. Uh, Backstab at just the right time. So, as far as I'm concerned, Puck is looking strong going into this. Bear in mind, of course, you still don't you don't owe me 50 bucks unless this is a 2-1. So, you might that get away with true. it. You gotta still be true. rooting for Minigun. So, on one hand, TB, I want... You want Minigun to win, but then you also want Puck to win 2-0 because then you don't have to pay me 50 bucks, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how that's it is. That's what I say. Like, I'm always cheering for more StarCraft, and then I'm like, but I also want more Taco Bell. So... 
It's going to be a tough call, but really my, my predictions and my wishes do not matter because, number one, they're not listening to the cast, and number two, it, it, they're just going to have to focus here. I mean, Minigun feeling good. Uh, well, both these players feeling good after their wins initially, but uh, he's got to be feeling a little uneasy after that unless I, – I, I still don't know if he recognized that he wasn't mining with those three probes. If he does recognize that, he can sit back and be like, all right, I made a stupid mistake, a slight misclick, had the rally point on the probe instead of on the mineral line. I, I, I'm still a good player. I got this. But uh, if he doesn't realize that, it may be a little bit intimidating because he's like, well, I just felt behind the whole time. Um, so I'm kind of curious to see how this shapes up. Yeah, I'm intrigued. So looks like we're doing screen region for the rest of the broadcast. It shouldn't affect it too much, although you may notice that the frame rate will not necessarily maintain a 60 because this is a less efficient way of doing things. We have no idea what happened with XSplit. I don't want to restart XSplit because I would drop the stream. So you'll still see the games, but I'm just letting you know what's going on. I'm so sorry for all the technical problems we've had today. We have got everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong today in every possible respect. It's been horrible. <laughs> God. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's kind of how running your own tournament goes. People don't realize ex exactly how much work and how many moving parts there really are in something like this. Because essentially, I mean, you know, tournaments used to be ran by like 50 people, 30 people. And now it's just like TV is like, I got this on my own. So, of course, there's going to be some technical difficulties when you start relying on so much software. But uh, thankfully, I, I think we're smoothed out now. I think things have settled down just a little bit. So, of a course, bit. thank you to everyone yeah. watching. Um, I, I think there was, what, 30,000 at some point, which is amazing. Yep, obviously it's so. dipping up and down because we lost the stream again. So, you know, the, things are we're mostly stable. We're just running into technical problems. We'll be right back after the short break, folks, with Game 2. Will Puck close it out 2-0, or will we see Minigun with the comeback? We'll find out very shortly, folks. Do not go anywhere.
right, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting into the next game right here. Root Puck versus Root Minigun Husky. You excited for this one? I am indeed, man. I mean, honestly, I love casting any tournament, but this tournament especially has been awesome. Just the way that it is set up and uh, the players we're getting to see. I mean, these are players who actively went out of their way to try and participate in this tournament because it was top 16 on the American ladder. Of course, everyone was vetted by Blizzard. So here we go. The map is going to be ve uh, Belshire Vestige, as uh, I like to say. But I, I got to say, Come just on. really quickly, a side note, I love the little swooping start that this map has. Oh, yeah, it's really uh, nice. Game Heart's really, really cool. I would love to explain to you what is going on in the corner right there, but I have never seen that happen before. So this is a definitely a weird one for me. It's like, what is going on? <laughs> is, is there so anything strange. else that could possibly go wrong, TB, today? Or are we pretty much, aside from the plague and maybe an 8.2 magnitude earthquake? I, I'm I'm out of ideas, man. I don't see anything else that could possibly go wrong here, but it's, yeah, we, I will try and fix this afterwards. I don't even know what's causing it. So anyway, let's get on with it. We have for you here in the Red Trunks playing Protoss for the Southeast, Root Puck, who's currently up one game in this particular series. The score isn't even showing up. It, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> I think I'm going to go tear my hair out for this. This is what you get for being caster, observer, and production. Ah, versus TV, his opponent. You've just, you've just lost your passion. Is uh, all it my really passion is gone, to. man. It, it ran out the window like an hour ago, <laughs> just trying to escape from the problems that we're currently having. His opponent, it is the one and only Root Minigun, currently down one game in this best of three series. Puck looking to take one more victory to take Puck all the way through to the round of eight. That is what will happen, but Minigun, of course, looking to try and claw that back. Let's see if he can do that. He's in the blue trunks playing Protoss to the northwest. I will say that uh, Puck has a fanciful love for putting gateways behind his mineral line, as uh, yep. he did that in the last game and in this one. Gas, of course, going to be going down here for both players. You kind of can't play without gas unless you're going for a proxy. Like, it has to basically be an in-base proxy, which is, uh, it's always been a semi-effective rush, uh, even since Brood War doing that uh, in PvP was always quite fun, just because Zelts are super strong in the beginning, but once the Stalkers come out, not so much. Nope. And uh, we just have to wait and see, is it a double gas for either player? Is it going to be a single gas? Uh, very rarely will you see single gas for too long, because that basically just means a four gate. There's basically yeah. nothing else that uh, single gas can mean. And indeed, here comes the other gas for Minigun. Yep, that's very, very true. Second gas coming down right there for him, but as you said, no gas yet for Puck. There it is. Okay, so slightly later. Not really indicative of all that much, but it does seem less likely. I think a four gate, four gates like would just be a build that I don't think would work very well in Heart of the Swarm anymore. Not with, not in PvP, not with the Nexus Cannon. I don't see how you could really make that work out all that well. Yeah, I mean, they definitely, I think this is one of the, the ideas that Blizzard has uh, with, with kind of the new units is that they, they don't want builds like four gates to really be too viable anymore. I mean, they, they do still work. Like, if you hide pylons, if you're able to recognize that your opponent does not have a mothership core early, there are ways to make that build work. But you mentioned that, and then, of course, one or two force fields on the ramp, and uh, you can't warp in on high ground, and it makes it much difficult, much more difficult than it used to be anyways. So that's why you will see a lot of openers. But... Really, Protoss has a couple of pretty solid openers. One of them is going to, again, be the DT opener. It's good on every single map because, well, Protoss can just warp in anywhere. Yep. And uh, going early DTs because Oracles are also a viable option. But if it's Oracle versus DT, then it comes down to the positioning of the Oracle and how much energy it has. So it's a very it's a very dicey, a very dicey mess, uh, matchup because if you mess up once, then you get hard countered, and it's not a lot of fun here. So I think that's kind of what we saw last game. We'll see if we see the same here. Yeah, I would certainly say so. Robo coming down, though. All right, a difference in build here. Minigun is going for the Stargate play. Puck going for the Robo. Interesting stuff here. So it will, of course, allow him to get an Observer out. But I have to wonder if this is the right call. If he ends up going against Mass Air, then he may struggle a little bit here because, of course, getting the Robo down early on in one base, that means later Twilight Council, later Blink to shut down Phoenix or Oracle play. It's tricky. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting thing. I like getting an early robo just because the observer locks down any kind of DT tech. Plus, you scout what they get, and it's a very defensive style of play. 
Um, you really can't be too aggressive for the most part with two gates and one robo. I imagine he's going to get an observer out right away. Sometimes you'll see a mortal. Nope, it's going to be observer this time. But uh, as you mentioned before, there's a lot of stuff that minigun can do here to actually start pressuring to uh, to really try and get ahead in tech. And really, the, the observer player tends to be a little bit more on the back foot um, as far as defending goes. He does have a third gate on the way. So maybe try to be aggressive right now. He has to be careful. And he doesn't have any mortal on the way, too. So the yeah. observer is actually going to be used to defend against DTs. And he could very well be aggressive. Somehow a probe, I just realized, actually made it actually in the main made it in. It scouted everything. I don't know how that happened. That should never have happened. And it's great that Puck managed to do that because now Puck knows exactly what he's playing against. The Twilight has immediately come down in response to this. So we're going to be seeing that Blink Stalker play. Or we could be seeing the Dark Templar. He also he cancelled the Immortal, didn't he? Yeah, he cancelled the Immortal. Yeah. He knew what was coming out. The thing about the Immortal is it sounds great. It's like, oh, he'll be totally fine. He's got an Immortal against Stalkers. But it's not because all you need is a couple of Phoenixes. That Immortal is not taking part in that fight. He's going to be up in the air, wheel wheeling his little legs around saying, God, I wish I could just go back to Aya right now. Yeah, it's one of those, like, kill me now type moments where you really can't do a whole lot. But the Twilight Council is done. Notice how the Observer moved out right away, too, because he realized, well, I don't need to protect against <gasps> ETs. Oh! oh, oh Minigun! Oracle right there. A huge pickup. Oh, man. Puck looking to be in, uh, in such good shape here, TB. Man, Puck is Oh, he attacked some Stalker by accident. But it's, it's cool. It was, it was, it. It's okay. I'll, get, I'll let, him, let him get away with that. Like, the Oracle it's, dying is a big deal. It really is. Yeah, it's those uh, it's those damn destructible rocks, look, man, right? Your hey, ramp. It, look, they look, put them there to prevent you from getting cheesed, and then you accidentally kill. And then, before, you would actually waste all your banelings on it. And now you, actually, now you have check to attack Check the pylon, it, man. Correct? Check that pylon up to the top. Uh, Puck actually has a proxy uh, pylon right behind that position. Yes, he does. And uh, he has his own nexus on the way. It is a little bit delayed. I don't think that pylon gets spotted when the nexus finishes. We'll finish. Uh, we'll see here in just a second. Yeah, oh, he there does. Barely spots it. Oh, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, that's going to get cleaned up now. I think uh, I have a feeling, yeah, Minigun's just going to kill it before anything warps from it. It's probably for the best that he does. If anything did warp from it, then that's a big waste. So he picks that off. He gets good scouting information on the exact timing of what his opponent's got, but it's a shame that didn't really turn into anything. Bear in mind, though, Minigun is now in a position where he has his Nexus up before Puck and is also building a little bit of a Sky Toss, as you can see here. We've got the... Void Ray as well as the Phoenix, and a second Void Ray is on the way. Yeah, I mean, Void Ray is a unit in this matchup right now that is just awesome. Um, it, I mean, it doesn't do d extra damage versus Archons, but it's so good at dealing with Stalkers, which yeah. Stalkers are kind of the one unit you're like, all right, I see Void Ray, I'm going to go Mass Stalker and Blown counter away. it. Yeah. Yeah, not really the case anymore with that, no. uh, with that overcharge ability. So yeah. it, it's a very good unit. Uh, really in every situation, um, because you can either counterattack with it, you can engage the Stalkers directly, and they have a slightly longer range than the Archons, so there's no obvious counter to Void Rays right now, I would say. Um, so, yeah, the more, the more the merrier when it comes to that unit. Minigun with the use of this particular detection ability, and he used that to snipe off the Observer of his opponent, but what that does mean is he's got way less energy going into this middle line. Oh, and he gets feedback oh! straight away. Nice pickup there by Puck. Now, the cool thing about that feedback is, since we're not seeing Storm, this is blatantly charge lot Archon composition from Puck. That's what he's looking to transition into. He's got a lot of Stalkers right now, and he doesn't get the Oracle, which is unfortunate there. But, yeah, now he is bringing in the full-on force of the charge lot Archon. That is a very, very dangerous composition here. Yeah, Charge Lot Archon is uh, kind of, I mean, with a couple Stalkers mixed in as well, is basically the best composition versus Mass Void Ray because the Void Rays are just not able to burn down the Archons quickly enough. There are three Void Rays. A fourth one is on the way here. Photon Overcharge is used. He basically just baited that because I think he's waiting for the Archon. There it is right there. And uh, he may either wait for this to time out or honestly just go for it because that Archon is going to get some pretty awesome splash damage because that look at that army. It's right in the choke point here. Looks like Minigun's trying to poke out there, realizes, uh-uh, no way. And uh, at this point, did he bring the Oracle back? Yes, he did. So he has that Oracle here. Can use that for extra DPS. But uh, I got to say, it's going to be tough for Minigun here. Does he have... Yeah, he has enough energy for another Photon Overcharge. I don't know if that's enough, though. Mm, I don't think so. I mean, against what he's got, Photon Overcharge is nice, but... It's only really good against small clumps of units. It's a nice piece of supporting fire, but it's not AoE. It's not going to deal all that well with Charge Lot Archon at all. Puck's going to start to put the pressure on now. Now, here's the thing. Minigun is... actually managed to get a probe out. I have no idea how he managed to pull that off, but he may be able to 
do a run by onto the natural there. His Phoenix isn't going to do much. He needs his Void Rays at home to defend. We've got Archons coming in from Minigun himself, though. So this has gone on long enough that Minigun was able to get his own Archons out. With yeah. Void Rays support, he may be able to hold this. And if he is then able to get a Zealot run by, say, into the natural from this pylon right here, then I have a feeling that things are going to go really, really well. Yeah, I was going to say, I think he bought just enough time here. Now that he has his own Archons, he can keep the uh, the other units away from his own Void Rays. Then he has the Void Ray advantage, and yep. he's in a really good spot. Um, and I think that uh, Puck realized that backed out, but he may actually go for it right now. He's, he's basically just poking at the entrance here, hoping that Minigun gets a misstep right now, trying to force another Photon Overcharge, because then that opens up uh, the possibility to attack right away. Now he is going to go ahead and get oh, one of the gateways. I think he will be able to get it right now, and he does get it there, but does he actually commit right now? One thing that I don't normally see, oh, there's going to be that uh, Zell run by, by the way, down the south. Lots of probes here. Not sure why the probes are engaging there. Always want to evacuate those versus Zealots, because Zealots just do not die uh, versus probes. There we go, engaging there in the mineral line. But uh, either way, a big, big battle about to happen. Minigun's doing pretty good, man. He's uh, being able to pick off pylons. He's picking off units left and right. This run by was a pretty big deal. It was defended fairly well by Puck, but bear in mind, everything he warps in here, he can't warp in at the front. So this is Minigun playing delaying tactics and doing as much damage as he can. And Puck, for the first time in the game, does fall behind in the work account. Yeah, this is super, super important right now for Minigun. He's able to lock down this expansion. He's forced the retreat. And guess what? He's got a third base on the back of this. He's warping in even more Zelts to buy even more time. And I always hate to sell it, but these are, I always hate to say it, but these Zelts are sacrificial. They are doing their job, which is buying time, allowing him to get positioned for that third base. And uh, honestly, when Minigun threw this Nexus down, uh, Puck could have just swung up there and killed it right away because he, he was still in position to kill it off. So those Zealots, bought the time he needs, gets him ahead. Minigun's decision-making is starting to click right now, and, uh, and, the, and the slow methodical gears are starting to turn. I've got to apologize. I've forgotten the hotkey to get rid of that line that I drew on the map there. <laughs> so it's like, uh, uh oh, it's not the one that I thought it was. So that line will remain there for the rest of the game. That's what I get for trying to do fancy things, right? But this pylon, kind of annoying, but it's not really going to do anything. It just, it spots the expansion, but that's that third base going down for Minigun. And now Puck has to deny this. He must. Although if he doesn't, then he's so far behind. Yeah, uh, God, he's got to be so careful. I mean, this is so many Void Rays and so many Archons. I think it is Shift-Q to Eraser Drawings. I just looked it up in the little Shift menu thing. Shift-Q? Oh, thank you very uh, much for that. There we go. Awesome. Hopefully that worked. Anyways, there's going to be a big attack <laughs> over here. Uh, as he is killing off the rocks right there and uh, Double Gateway able to block that off for now. Minigun, I got to say, overall has been a really passive player in all, almost all the games that we've seen out of him. Um, even PvP, it's very difficult to be passive. The Archons right in front, though, going to get huge oh. hits on those Zealots before they're able to activate that charge. And I think Minigun's going to come out ahead right now. He is ahead in supply. It is getting further and further in the lead. Void Rays are so ridiculously good. His Archon oh. count's still high. Can Puck break so it, though? Close. Like there's just enough Stalkers to push this back. Minigun needs a warp in, and he needs it fast, but uh, Puck, with that time warp, God, those units just move so slow he can't that he maneuver. had to retreat. He had to retreat early. Yeah, this is really bad now for Puck, because he needed to take that third base out, and he didn't do it. The Void Rays don't have their charge available for a little bit of time, but Puck doesn't really have an army left either, so that's not really a big deal. Storm is available, as you can see, but against Archon, Storm's just like, what is the point? It's like, uh, you might as well just be tickling them. Yeah. No, it, it's like worse than the Sentry Tickle, man. It doesn't yeah. do any damage. Um, so, it is a bunch of Archons here for both these players. I mean, five Archons for one, four for the other. Production doesn't show any more Void Race here for Minigun. But Minigun really needs to start investing some of this money. He's low on gas. And once again, ah, he's got idle probes. He doesn't have them in that second gas there. He's down four mining probes at that third base. Which, again, is why I think he's low on gas here. This is the same mistake Minigun made in the last game. There he goes, finally yeah, putting it in it. there. And, uh, but, but seriously, gas for Protoss is the most important thing. And Puck trying to jockey for position here. Does he actually have enough? That's a nice Guardian Shield. That sentry is very well placed. But uh, it's not going to be enough. Time Warp, freaking frustrating. It is. 